Hey guys, the other day I came across some lichens. Just a short interruption here. When I first made a video where I mentioned lichens, I came across this problem. Lichen. 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 I live in Europe, so it would be logical if I'd say lichen. But literally half of you guys watching are from the US. So, it would make more sense to say lichen. Well, I had to solve this, so I came up with a way to piss off everyone. Because in this video, you'll hear me say lichen and lichen alternately and without pattern. So you're just gonna have to deal with that. Now let's get back to the video. I thought it'd be fun to talk about these interesting organisms. So first I started gathering footage by making pictures and filming them and I also couldn't resist filming them through the stereo microscope to see interesting structures. Here's a picture of how that went. This was quite scary because it was placed on top of a narrow fence, about 20 meters above ground. To top it all off, it was really windy, so I clamped it down with a big old clamp. I didn't let go of my phone for one second because, well, if you've seen my last video, you know how trustworthy those little suction cups are. Anyway, I've been boring for far too long, let's do some lichen talk. Here are some different lichens I found on top of the fence of my roof terrace. Lichens, 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 Lichens are a very interesting organism because they are not one organism. They are a great example of a mutualistic relationship, a symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit. Lichens consist of a fungus and one or more species of algae or cyanobacteria. So, what does this mutualistic relationship look like? The algae and cyanobacteria both have an ability that the fungi find very attractive. Photosynthesis. Plants usually convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen and water, using energy from light. This is also what the cyanobacteria do. The algae in lichens produce sugar alcohols instead of glucose. The important part is that the algae and cyanobacteria produce sugars which the fungi use. A huge benefit. The algae and cyanobacteria benefit from the fungi in more than one way. The fungi can hold water from the rain, fog and dew, which the algae and cyanobacteria use to photosynthesize. The fungi excrete a little acid called vitamin C, which helps the algae absorb minerals. The most important thing the algae and cyanobacteria get out of the fungi is protection. The fungi protect against frost, intense sunlight, dehydration, damage and if it's poisonous against being eaten. The algae can usually survive without the fungus, but the fungus usually can survive without the algae. Lichens come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Let's talk about that. First I want to explain to you what a thallus is. A thallus is a multicellular plant-like body that, unlike plants, is not differentiated into different vegetative organs, such as stem, root and leaf. Organisms with a thallus can form organs that resemble a plant stem, leaf or root, but the different organs originate from the same stem cell. Here are a few examples. A mushroom is the thallus of a fungus. This is the thallus of a liverwort. This is the thallus of a red algae. And what looks like leaves and a stem in kelp are also thalli. And just like how a mushroom is a thallus of a fungus, the lichen you see as a whole is a thallus. Because these thalli grow differently, you get different growth forms in different lichens. There are many, many different growth forms in lichens, and I won't cover them all, but here's a few. Some grow like crusts, some grow very powdery. There are a few growth forms where the thallus has formed leaf-like structures. There are lichens 
that look like little leafless bushes. Some lichens are hairy or furry. There are even lichens that look like beards. In almost all of these growth forms, the fungus plays the most important role in determining the shape of the lichen. In hairy lichen, it's actually the algae that determines the shape of the lichen. Because the cyanobacteria shouldn't be left out, they too are the most important shape deciding factor in one of the growth forms, the gelatinous lichen. As you can see here, lichen shapes go much further with different thallus shapes growing on top of other thallus shapes. It's just a crazy organism, but I don't want to make this video too boring, so I won't cover it in this one. Now this is a pretty cool thing to see, lichens growing on a rock. This might seem pretty boring at first, until you realize that you're seeing a little phenomenon called ecological succession happening right in front of your eyes, which I will briefly explain. We start with a bare rock where nothing grows. When the environmental factors are favorable, plants, or in this case lichens, settle on that rock. These plant species and lichens are called pioneers. Pioneer species have to withstand harsh conditions, but they can live here. Few species survive here, so they are not likely to be eaten, and there are no competing species either. The populations grow rapidly and pioneer species have many offspring. This creates a pioneering ecosystem. Over time, small animals appear, because the first vegetation has made the abiotic factors a little less unpleasant. The plants provide shelter from the wind, it remains moist between the leaves and stems, it remains cool when the temperature rises, and heat is retained for a while when the temperature drops again. A layer of hummus forms on the bare rock, creating a primitive fertile soil. That's how pioneer species make extreme conditions less extreme. Over time, other plant and animal species appear. They are taking over the territory of the pioneer species, which cannot compete. They disappear. The newcomers are eventually replaced by other species. The environmental factors are becoming milder with each new ecosystem. Gradient ecosystems keep succeeding one another as new species keep appearing. And that's how our first ecosystem on the bare rock, consisting of lichens, through ecological succession, could eventually turn into the most stable ecosystem on land, the forest ecosystem. I could go on and on and on and on about lichens and how they grow and their ecological and other functions, and way more. And I might, but I feel like this video is long enough now, so maybe some other time. There is one more little fun thing I wanted to mention. A week ago, 18,000 Canadians elected Cladonia stellaris as the lichen that expresses the essence of their country best. Canada is now the first and only country with a national lichen. Good for you, Canada. So, that's it for this video. A different topic than usual, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Lichens, 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 lichens,